Welcome back. My name is Kit. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, a TV and film podcast brought straight to you through your ear holes. I love your NPR announcer voice. We're discussing all kinds of movies and TV shows Ooh. frequently. But today on the episode, we're discussing The Raid, Redemption. Redemption. From 2012, written and directed by Gareth Evans. <laughs> That was beautiful. Mm. I, that was doing something to me internally. I didn't know I could feel more attracted to you, but now I am. Give me something to read. Uh, my notes. Mm. Rama, what? <laughs> Your first <laughs> note is Rama works out, yeah. followed by wife is preggers. Yep. <laughs> you didn't give me a lot to work with there. I, wanted, my... I just wanted you to read those lines in that voice. <laughs> Rama works out. Wife. His preggers. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think I've got a uh, erotica audiobook future, perhaps. Oh, for sure. You think so? Yeah. I think so. I bet you could like, have you seen that? There's that person who like reads erotica f novels on TikTok, but he always does it as like Mickey Mouse or <laughs> like Goofy. And no. it's, it's, no, it, it does. <laughs> I'll, I'll put my hand down your back and slowly <laughs> caress the <them> cheeks. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, I think you could do that. Wait. Have you ever thought about doing that on the Kit Laser TikTok? <laughs> I have actually thought about like basically raising up a flag for um, voice people hiring voice actors to mm -hmm. see me. But just by like, yeah, some kind of pseudo comedy bit where I'm actually earnestly trying to get a job. Mm -hmm. But no, I've never done it. <sighs> but I'm you down. Should. You should. You should. I agree. Uh, uh, you can email the show with your support of my voice acting career to streamingthingspod at gmail.com. You can finance my ventures at patreon.com slash streaming things at a variety of tiers. <laughs> you don't get nothing for it. You get action, baby. You yeah. get extra episodes, bonus content, and we got something coming down the pipeline that's going to be a big deal for Patreon. Hot Cold War action, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deep cut. <laughs> I don't even remember the context of that joke. I think that was a stream Stranger Things thing? Probably. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, extra episodes for you folks coming very soon. We got a big announcement coming up soon. Um, but uh, that's how you do that. Go to streamingthingspod.com to find all of our you know bonus episodes, access to our merch store, uh, a bunch of new merch coming out soon as well. So many new things coming up for Stranger we or Streaming Things soon. It's happening. It's just a matter of that we're just two normal men. We're just normal men, innocent men mm -hmm. uh, with daily lives. So some of the stuff has been a little bit hard getting off the ground. But hard. once it is off the ground, hopefully in the next month or two. Man, to hold on to those socks, baby. Socks. Because they're going to fly off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Is that, what, is, that, is that what that sounds like? Yeah. like <laughs> More like. <laughs> mm, I like that one. That was that good. Was two socks getting yanked off. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be that's going to be your socks someday soon, listener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My, my piggly wigglies. Oh, no. My nine piggies. <laughs> my toesy woesies. <laughs> Getting roasty toasty, them toesy woesies up here on streaming things. Yeah, baby. Today, we're talking about the Raid Redemption from 2012, uh, selected by Orion, one of our beloved patrons. And uh, we're going to talk about our overall thoughts, our history with the film, what it was like watching it this time, maybe for the first time. I'm not even actually positive that Steve has ever seen this before. And then we'll do a play-by-play, scene-by-scene recap. You know the drill. And then we'll fuck right off. <laughs> right into the sunset. Yep. <laughs> See you guys in the Discord, baby. Mm. Uh, Will it turn out that the two of us, two people existing in two different windows of a computer screen, are actually brothers this whole time? Find out. Yeah. Plot twist. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, Steve, I'm curious, what did our beloved listener say about why they chose the movie The Raid? Well, this movie, as you know, was chosen by Orion, and I reached out to Orion, and they wrote back and responded, Hello, Kit and Steve. A huge fan of the pod, and so much so, I finally started the Star Wars franchise for the first time just so I can keep up with your coverage. Wow. Never could give them a try outside of the pod. Annie Hoosel. I was given an opportunity to make you watch a movie I love, and after so many different ways I could have gone with, I just couldn't stop thinking about my favorite martial arts action movie of all time, and that's The Raid Redemption. I've seen this movie more times than any other movie in my life. 
with high octane and violent action sequences in the film, I feel like I haven't chased a high like that in a long time. I love the action genre in general, but this movie will always have a huge space in my heart, and I'm so happy I can request my favorite pod to cover it. So thank you again for everything you gentlemen do for the pod and for my sanity. Mm. Thank you, Orion. Thank you, Orion. Orion is actually one of our longest uh, patrons, I believe. Thank you. Like back when there was only like... In, in the double digits, I think Orion Just was in there. Yeah. What we call Enza's crew. <laughs> <laughs> the Enza's posse. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm delighted to talk about this movie. But Steve, I'm uh, extra curious. I think, was this the first time that you'd ever seen The Raid? This is the first time I've ever seen The Raid Redemption. I know that I've saw, I saw some patrons in the Discord, uh, specifically one who I shall not name that is no longer getting a Kenzie screening link because they said they could... <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't finish the movie. It was too violent and scary. Oh, it is violent and scary. What did you think about The Raid? What was it like? Uh, I thought so. I think I've tried to get you to watch this for quite a while, have I not? I mean, we've talked about it a bunch yeah. of times in the past. Um, the, this movie, so I sat down to watch it. I, I kind of knew what it was just because it's a, a very influential movie. Like, I don't think people really, maybe American audiences, maybe necessarily don't understand just how influential this movie is in modern action movies. Mm -hmm. And so it was really cool to kind of sit back and kind of see, you know, w where all this influence came from. Like, what was the, the the progenitor of our modern action movie, you know, style that you see so often, like in a John Wick film or something. And some of the characters in this movie show up in John Wick movies. So that was kind of fun to, 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 to nerd out about when they popped up. Um, overall, I don't know if I love this movie in terms of like as an overall movie. It's just a, a, the storyline is very shallow, but it doesn't need to be anything other than that. Uh, what you're watching this movie for is the action, is the stunts, are, it's, is, is the choreography. And I think in that level, this movie just sings beautifully, right? The, 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 the fight choreography in particular is like insane and off the charts. But I did have this issue where towards the end of the movie, I guess it's because, I, you know, uh, I live in America or I'm just, I live in, I'm an American in the year 2024. So by the end of the movie, after watching so many violent fight scenes for an hour and 30 minutes, basically, I was just kind of like, all right, I'm done. Like, I'm good. Like, these are awesome. Everything's great. Everything on screen looks cool. Everyone's doing a great job, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have the story connectivity or the, the characters per se, per se to connect to that really kind of, keeps me engaged for the mm -hmm. whole thing. Um, again, I don't think this is a bad movie at all. I think it's actually really, really astounding and cool. And just the, the people who made this, you know, they, they deserve all the flowers in the world for being able to make this. It's just from a story perspective, it doesn't hold my interest as much as I think it should. Uh, I kind of talk about this, like this is, this is kind of a weird comparison, but when it comes to like video games, right? There are like really, really popular video games like a Fortnite or a Call of Duty, those type of movies that are just behe or games that are behemoths in the industry. They're super mega popular and rightfully so because, you know, they're really, really well made. But I can't get into them because there's no real story to them. And to me, story is king. And that's what really like my favorite movie or video games are always games that have stories to them and that you can really like sink your teeth into like a Mass Effect or a, like an Uncharted or something. Um Whereas this doesn't necessarily have a story that I can really sink my teeth into. So like by, again, by the end of the movie, this is a long way of saying by the end of the movie, I was just kind of like, all right, I'm ready for this to wrap up. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm done. Like, I, I think I got it. Uh, not to say, not to take anything away from the action because the action is balls to the wall, stellar and cool. I think it's just, uh, uh, I, I wish they would like leave people wanting more type situation. Cause I think they like give everyone what you would possibly want. Um, but I think that's just a minor criticism. But overall, the movie is really, really great and like incredible. And I couldn't do any of this shit. <laughs> no, you've tried. I've tried. I, I like, I, well, I'm going to do a kick. And then I ended up falling on my face. Massively wounded. Yeah. When you tried to break into a, 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 a drug dealer run skyscraper. Yeah. I was like, Steve, what are you doing, bud? I like, would break into the wrong house. <laughs> it's like, it it hurt my shoulder old, doing it. It's just some one old lady's ranch house. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to make it to the top. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I just heard her, and then he came out with her hitting him with a, a rolling pin. Oh man, <laughs> I'm raiding. I know you're the drug dealer. I'm gonna get you. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this movie? I adore this movie. I'm a I'm a big action head. <laughs> I think uh, 
I do love me a good sci-fi, but I think sci-fi? you are what you are to sci-fi is what I am to Action. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes we cross paths in that endeavor. Uh, but you know, I've said it many, many times on the show. I'm being a dead horse at this point. It was the dead horse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was the dead horse noise. It's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded kind of nice. Um, I, uh, I I grew up on Van Damme and Stallone and movies that you've never heard of because they're terrible. And, you know, it's a B and C grade action flicks that were just on VHS at my local store, and I'd take home like, yes, action US grenades. Um, so this is right up my alley and you gotta, you gotta put yourself into, this is 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this is before John Wick. Oh man. I wish I saw this movie in 2011. Like, yeah, I think I would probably feel way better about it if I did see it in 2011. Yeah. Cause that happens a lot where you see now this movie was inspired by many, many, uh, international martial arts films since the seventies for mm-hmm. sure. But I, there, I think there was a, a revitalization at this point in history that led to, you know, movies like John Wick, which have led to dozens of other people being inspired, you know, into into hard choreography, practical effects, uh, lean, mean stories is what I like to call them. And it's not that there isn't a story. And I'm not saying that you said there wasn't, but I really think when you, when you do too much, it actually takes away, like they know what they're here to do and what you're here for. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just needs an enough connective tissue. Uh, I think you could argue, uh, there is a sequel to this movie, which I do suggest you watch and you probably would like it more because it's a lot more locations, a bigger budget, a lot more it's the prison one, right? Uh, no, not really. Kind of, but not oh, really. Okay. Um, it, it, it's it's more something. like gangsters and the uh, same, same characters, uh, but involved in like a higher up version of what's going on here. How high does this go? Not the higher building, literally, but like it, and it takes place throughout an entire city. You know how at the end of this movie, it's implied that there's a cabal of people that were in charge of this. Yeah. Like, so it gets into that territory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a lot. You're more, out. It's a lot more complicated. I don't like it as much. Most people think the second one is better because there's like some equally incredible action sequences with a lot more story. But I do prefer the shorter, leaner because it's like two and a half hours long, too. I think the shorter, leaner, meaner version of this story is good. I'm a person who John Wick 4 is maybe my favorite, but I, I think it's the first one. I do love, I love the, first the simplicity and the lean, mean nature of the first one. Like he's pissed off. He's sad about his wife. He's pissed about his dog, Baba Yaga bitch. Right. And when, Baba Yaga. once we get into the world building, it's so fun, but like it gets so enmeshed into the high table and all this, they're having a good time, but I, I just prefer the, the, I just keep saying it lean, mean. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like about this story. Like, it opens up. We know this guy's a cop. We see some mystery about uh, a patriarchal figure. I'll bring him back. We know there's emotional stakes because he has a you know, pregnant wife. That's all we need to know. Like, oh, God, I hope he gets home. They need him. He's retiring after today. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then we we see a training month. I'll get into all this. What I think is brilliant about the way this movie opens because it is it is truly like this is all you need to know. And then kick ass, you know. Um, yeah. And then we get to see what, what at the time was yes, brutally violent, but also just some really incredible low budget, which is what the key is. It's what's so impressive about it. Uh, Action, you know, wide shots of people really getting in there. You get to see the whole thing. It looks like people are getting hurt. You know, you got uh, old boy from 2003. That sounds right. Uh, Or eight, I think three. Um, But we get the hallway sequence, Park Chan-wook's old boy which was legendary, right? Uh, this one take craziness of you know, like 80 people fighting this one guy. Uh, and Gareth Evans asked, like, what if I had the entire movie was just that, you know? And, and then he did it. So this is an Indonesian film, but Gareth Evans was built, uh, born in the UK. He's a Welsh filmmaker. Um, so like, there were some language barriers and stuff. Like I've seen, I used to be obsessed with this movie and I would watch all the behind the scenes stuff on the Blu-ray. And there's many moments where he's like with eco ways. I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, who plays Rama, Rama. Uh, who barely speaks English. And when he's trying to answer these reporters questions, Gareth has to kind of chime in a lot and stuff, but I don't think he like speaks the language of Indonesia like super well either. So if, from a filmmaking standpoint, not only do I not know how he got the camera there and how they pulled this off, but I'm like, I don't know how he managed this crew. Um, it, it's just really impressive. And it, this yeah. movie was made for under a million dollars. So, and so yeah. in 2011, other than like 
a couple Mission Impossible films, like your your action, your American action landscape was looking pretty rough, pretty fake, overly polished, yeah, uh, pretty boring. And then you got this guy coming in doing this like dirty, gritty, dirty, rough and tumble. wild shit. Yeah. And it was revolutionary. Now, Gareth Evans went on to do The Raid 2, but he also did a show that was really hard to watch because it was only available on like AMC Plus, which who the fuck has that? It was called Gangs of London. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember Gangs of London. With some of the Game of Thrones folks and some of the Peaky Blinders folks. Uh, I was really into season one. Just a huge fan of Gareth Evans. And he's been working on a movie for so long. That like when I first announced it and was excited about it was when I first started my TikTok page. <laughs> so that was almost three years ago yeah. when I was like, coming soon, guys. And it's still not out. Dang. And it's called Havoc and it stars Tom Hardy. And so I'm so fucking excited to see what that looks like because, you know, I love Tom Hardy. Yeah, you do. Uh, but yeah, huge fan of The Raid. I was delighted to talk about this. It's kind of a tough movie to talk about it the way that we do because it's emotionally, uh, excuse me, it's mostly action set pieces. Yeah. Uh, but did you recognize any of the people in this movie, Steve? I did. Um, I know I've seen the guy who plays Rama in something. I can't quite place where. Uh, the guy who plays Mad Dog, Yayan Ruhian. I, 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 I'm probably butchering that. I've seen him in like several action movies as well. Like he's a pretty noticeable dude like he's very talented uh so um andy i think it's andy it might be rama but i think it's andy and mad dog just like the two the two guards of tama mm -hmm. uh are they have a cameo in i think force awakens uh yes yeah that's right they're in the when kanji they, club when they get onto the millennium falcon and they're hiding from them and stuff it's the uh, they're like i forget even what the context is but it cuts to them standing there and when i saw that live I hadn't, I don't think I had even seen the raid yet, uh, or I'd only seen it once, but like everybody cheered, uh, cause it was just this random fucking the raid cameo. Yeah. They're in, they're in the movie for maybe like a minute and a half yeah. of screen time. Yeah. But that's, maybe. I thought I was like waiting for you to be like, put the connect the pieces while watching this, or so maybe I, you knew at the time that it was from the raid or I as, soon as, as soon as you said that, I, that's reawake uh, that awakened yeah. the memory in me. <laughs> the force. Uh, yeah. The force awakened. I was like, Oh yeah, I do remember that being a thing. Cause that was a pretty big, uh, cause there's several cameos in that movie at the time that were like making waves like Daniel Craig's a stormtrooper. And, yeah. Uh, all kinds of people, tons of people are like in there. Um, but he, he's in one of the John Wick movies, right? Or two of I, I'm positive. Yeah, that that's the kind of movie that I mean. This is a if you're going to reference action films for a living, which is what the John John Wick films do, then you have to include uh, these guys. Um, yeah, he's in Chapter Three. Yeah, okay. That's that's what I thought. That's because that's what I was thinking. Like, oh, I remember that too. Because he's he's that dude is insanely talented, and like whenever he has a fight scene, you know, those are the best ones for me. You just immediately glue in. Yeah, on I think him. he's just and they. So I won't. I won't spoil anything actually. But yeah. Oh, it is Rama. It's actually Rama and uh, Mad Dog that are in the Force Awakens. Um, but he's also. I would highly recommend a movie from 2018 called The Night Comes for Us. If you're into like brutal, cool action, it's it's directed by Timo Tajanto. But also uh, the guy who plays Jaka, uh, I think his name is Joe. Joe Ta Taslim? Yes. He is in a show that I love that anybody who loves this movie would really enjoy called Warrior that I've talked Jeez. about many times. Uh, that's a like a show that Bruce Lee was working on before he oh, died. Oh, shit. He's uh, Sub-Zero in the Mortal Kombat movie. Joe is? Taslim? Yeah. Nice. Uh, dude, he's in a ton of stuff. He's he's in Star Trek Beyond. He's in Fast and the Furious 6. Wow. He's in a ton of stuff. I really, really liked him. Like, oh, he's I also in The Night Comes for Us. Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll say that uh, Jocka was like my favorite character in the movie. Yeah, Jocka's like, great. He's, he's just so charismatic. So and charismatic. Yeah, he's great. I, I really wanted more of him in the movie. Like, I kind of wish he was the main character. Well, in, in the Warrior, he's like a pseudo antagonist. He's not the main character, but he plays like the bodyguard and lover of the sister of the main character who are on an opposite gang and they fight a lot. But you can tell, like, you kind of root for him every time he's on screen, even though he's beating the shit out of the protagonist. You're like, I kind of like that guy. <laughs> that yeah, guy's cool. Joe's the shit. Uh, but I, I I love this movie. I think it's 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 tight and and perfect. Tight. Uh, five stars for me. For me. Raid Redemption, baby. <clears throat> uh, but And I love the way that time works in this movie. They kind of play, like, from a filmmaking perspective, you'll see a character creeping around a corner in the tensions building. The guy hiding pulls out a knife. And then it cuts to one of our other characters and it'll go for seven, eight, nine minutes. 
And then you're wondering maybe what happened. Maybe you completely forgot about the character behind the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a gunshot will fire. And then it'll cut back to the guy about to turn the corner. And he'll look to his, oh, when, fourth floor, let's go. Right? So it's like... Yeah it kind of froze time and went, it went backwards in time. And like when the, when the two periods met up, it kept going. And it's just an interesting choice that I probably wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I, I would be worried that people would be confused or it would uh, ruin the tension, but they do it several times. And I, I do think it works. Yeah. There's one point when uh mad dog and Andy like get in an elevator and they're like, we're going to go find him. And then you don't see them again for like 20 minutes or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, damn, that was a long elevator. Yeah. But in reality, it went back in time when it cut back to the other character, which yeah. is just like a weird choice, but I think works. This episode was sponsored by better help folks. It's 2024. What does everybody do in the new year? They make resolutions. They set goals. How about we don't do that? I mean, you can, it's obviously nice to have goals, but it's also a good exercise to focus on things that you like about yourself. You know, not making all those high pressure goals that you might fail at and just feel worse. You can set smaller goals. And I think therapy can be a good way to access things that you enjoy about your life and focusing on the positive, the gratitude. And BetterHelp is a good way to do that. If you've never given BetterHelp a try, it's therapy that's entirely online. You can do it all from your home and access a therapist by filling out a questionnaire. And if you end up not liking that therapist, you can switch. Again, along with the theme of this ad, uh, no pressure. What's Whatsoever. They're not going to have their feelings hurt by it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. Spring is just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. So how about we spring into action and give a special shout out to all of the patrons who keep the lights on over here at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of March. Thank you. Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento. 7, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, AK Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Big Butthorn, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Road, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen V, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much for supporting Streaming Things and let's get back to the show. But the movie opens, this is what I was talking about earlier, are it just, it starts, there's always an iconic training montage in these kinds of movies. This Gonna movie, need a montage. This movie's the only one that opens with it. Yeah. Because it's important that you know, what do you need to know? That Rama can kick ass. That's all you need to know, he's, baby. He's physically, he's got a pregnant, he's a physical specimen. He's got a pregnant wife that he cares about deeply. Yeah. And he can wreck house. And it shows you those two things within the first three minutes. And it's a perfect setup of his skills and the stakes. And so neither are, so you don't, you're not going to think he's a Mary Sue later on because you already seen this. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tells an older man, I'll bring him back. A, a Marty Sue. That's right. A Marty Sue. <laughs> uh, he tells the older man there, I'll bring him back, which I presume is the father. And because we later find out that they're brothers. Uh, but you don't know that yet. You're just like intrigued and that's all you fucking need. Let's go. Let's get in there. This is an action film, right? Uh, and you find out some backstory about where they're going. There's a little bit of exposition. Like for 10 years, this has been a straight, no police zone. This is a dangerous place. Tama, the guy who runs this is like a God. It's and a then, God in the underworld. And Tama has two guards that are vicious fighters named Mad Dog and Andy. <laughs> kind of an anticlimactic name. I, I love that. Like, here's Mad Dog and Andy. And, and, like, and, and it's, it's just like, our co-host. Saw, dude. Saw, dude. <laughs> you guys want some brisket? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then it cuts to Tama and his guards. He's eating noodles, lackadaisically shooting five people, but he only has four bullets. What a wild way to introduce your villain, man. Like just showing just how diabolical. Un yeah. Diabolical has As no Carl empathy. Urban would say he shoots the, it's, it's honestly really like horrifying. The, the, the way the guys are like, like looking at each other before they get shot. 
And then just the, the subtle, he puts, when he runs out of bullets, he puts the gun on the one guy who's next, his shoulder is like, hold this for me, please. Yeah. And he goes to get more bullets, but instead of bullets, he gets a hammer. And I bet that guy was like, who phew, he ran out of bullets. Yeah, I know, it sucks so bad. Oh shit, he's getting the hammer. <laughs> God damn it. I wish I had been the third guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I regret wishing to stay alive. Yeah. Cut back to the cops. Rama questions. Why them? Why today? Like, why are we finally raiding this? It kind of, again, because we need redemption, cutting into the, <laughs> cutting into the heart <laughs> of the mystery, uh, or like in, intriguing you. It's like, something's off here, right? But that's all you need to know. It's bare bones. I love it. Uh, the boss cop, Lieutenant Wayu is, is waiting there, uh, for the truck of cops. Uh, and he's <laughs> cop truck. I'm waiting for my cop. O trucks <laughs> truck. O cops. Oh yeah. Sorry. I said that backwards. Uh, and then he's peeved that Jocka brought extra guys. Cause again, what he's doing is not on the up and up. And it's funny that he's peeved. Cause like even the 30 of them are not enough. Yeah. Uh, or 18 or whatever it is. Hey, what was your plan? My guy, he was it's over, overconfident. Plan. Uh, so we, he, they kill the guard. Like they straight up just kill him, which is yeah. cool. It's like, then they'd kill him with like a, gr a garrot. Like, yeah, a garrot. <laughs> Something like that. But that poor dude's just watching like family feud and <laughs> eating a nice little he healthy breakfast bowl. Yeah. And they just choke him out and be like, all right, cool. Is it on there? And then he's, oh. did somebody read him his Miranda rights first? Yeah, totes. Totes. Uh, and then they run into the guy with the sick wife that's just trying to get in with his medicine. It's a good like Chekhov's thing because he's going to come back later. Again, everything about this script is like lean and mean, baby. Yeah, um, it also serves to show what a kind spirit Rama is because he's... Yes. Because is, is it Jaka that's like, fuck you, dude? No, I'll it's not Jaka. It's it's uh, the lieutenant and one of his other douchebags that are... Because Jaka's a pretty good guy too. Yeah. Um, uh, but somebody's like threatening to kill him right then and there. Like, yeah. if you live here, you're you're clearly a bad guy. And Rama's, Rama's like, like, no, whoa, no, dude. dude. Yeah, he's just trying to get... These are real estate? meds, man. Real estate's awful. You might just live here. Yeah. By the way, if you're a fan of the movie Dread, the Judge Dread remake yeah, with Carl Urban, I love that movie. It's literally almost a, just a remake of this, true. but in Dread skin. And it, I love Dread. I'm just saying, like all credit to the raid. I love Dread. Um, but then uh, they run in. They for the first five floors, there's no problems. They silence everybody they run into, tie them up or kill them adequately and easily. Uh, old shitty pants man is one of them. That's rough. Because there's just like a junkie that shit his pants that they have to arrest. And yeah. that's tough. It's like, oh man, you cuff him. Uh, until they run into a kid. On level five. On level five. And the lieutenant fucking shoots the kid. Right? That shocked me. It's wild. I didn't see that coming. But not fast enough. He alerts the kid that's up on floor six, who's able to make it to the intercom and alert the control tower, which wouldn't matter anyway. There's cameras everywhere eventually. Uh, yeah, but, but now Tama knows they're there, but we find out later Tama not only knows they're there. He expected them because he, the whole, what do you think happened? Were you able to grasp? I know there's not much story, but like, I'm just curious, like, cause I've seen it like six times. Oh, I was able to grasp that. Like you said, there's other powers that be, mm -hmm. and there's this whole network of, you know, Tama can, he kind of controls the well, he doesn't control the police, but he's allowed to kind of do what he can do so that the powers can be, can get their cut and their money. And they kind of have their thumb on the police to kind of leave him alone. But the, the way, is that his name? Wagu? Wagu? Wahoo. Wahoo Wah Wah is, um, he's kind of in on it, but he wants to take out this guy. I assume because he just has a feud with this guy, he just doesn't like him. And he thinks that if he takes him out, he'll be like congratulated and like, uh, uh, ascend as it were to be part of the higher echelon of, you know, this cabal of powerful people. Yeah. Kind of like the Lieutenant is just a dirty cop who's been mm -hmm. paid off for years to ignore this building. And he was instructed by the cabal, like the board members to kill Tama so that he could take Thomas position, which is a much higher oh, okay. in the organization. So he thinks he's there at their behest to assassinate this guy. And he's using his cops to do this. Yeah. And Thomas was told, Hey, while you's coming, kill his bitch ass. We so hate, it's a double cross kind of move. Right. That's, and then Rama is just stuck in this, but yeah. Rama also knows his, his little brother is there working Andy. for this guy. And he's there to get him back. And that's why he tells his dad at the beginning. So there's like, I think there's plenty of story and stakes here. It's just dressed up. It's really just a, a core, like a set dressing to, to 
utilize this stunt work, right? Mm -hmm. To like to showcase the stunt work here and the choreography. That's like the, what this movie's for. Yeah, there, um, the story is set up as like a mystery though. And I feel like, I, at least for me, like I learned more of what was happening a little too late. I feel like if I had known some of the other things mm -hmm. leading into it, I, bet I would have been more invested into it. But you kind of come, I do kind of like how everything kind of organically comes up. I think they do do there that There might be well. kind of a language barrier there too, but... Oh, for sure. Yeah. For me, the first time, like we'll get there, but the first time when Andy kills those guys in the elevator, I was so confused and hyped mm -hmm. uh, because he seemed so cool. He's just got like that Henley sweater, like long sleeve shirt. And he's so relaxed. Mm -hmm. and, and he's like, damn, that's going to suck when Rama kills you. And then the, like the little boy in me that was like, my two favorite characters are actually brothers and they're going to fight together. My that two cool. favorite action figures. Are yeah. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. I kind of thought he, and when he killed those dudes in the elevator, I thought it was like a, like a, no, I'm the real, you know, the mad dog one. That's me. And like, I don't need I just kill guys. everybody. I just kill everybody because <laughs> I'm just stone cold, yeah. you know, but yeah. actually he just, he just doesn't want them to know that he's brother. That's why he didn't guy. want him to come with him. He's going to try to save his brother because he saw him on the camera footage. I was like, fuck. Yeah. I did pick up that he clocked him on the camera footage and I thought maybe they had some sort of pass. Some he's beef. like, no, I'm going to kill him. Because uh, reasons. What a twist. What a twist. Yeah. So uh, Lieutenant shoots the kid and then he, he knows they're all there and lock it down. I'll call the neighbors is what he tells his, his dogs. Right. Which is funny. And the neighbors have sniper rifles. <laughs> Where uh, did those guys end up? I guess they just made it out. There was, there were several, <laughs> they parts, did their job. There's several times in the movie where I'm like, don't go out there. <laughs> yeah. The snipers are right there. <laughs> maybe they came running in and then they eventually died. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but they shoot a couple of the cops outside. They let the first one scream so that someone inside will come to the window and look, which in fact happens. Uh, and while he's looking out the window, the dude does the old step out of the cuffs move. And so one of the cops gets shot in the face uh, and then he comes over and has a machete under the table. And that's where you keep machetes. Him. That's where mine is. I just yeah. didn't know if everybody did that. Actually, under this podcasting uh, desk, I got a machete for all three of us. Yeah. Mine's a, I don't think that's a machete. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. I, I put a spork in your slot. <laughs> uh, and then the truck drivers get lit up having like a good old, how'd that game go conversation? Like they get shot like 49 times each. It's wild because the one guy who's talking shit about the game, they like precision shoot him. Yeah. And then they're just like, fuck it. Fuck that dude. That <laughs> other guy, let's line it up. Yeah. Poor guy. Uh, and then, yeah, they start to secure the building and kill all the cops. Uh, Jaka can't reach anyone. They've cut off his communication. And then Tama is on the intercom and says, uh, you know, the Lieutenant, and then and Tama's on the intercom saying, everybody fuck them up. I'll give you free rent for life. And <laughs> with housing crisis being what it is, they're like, oh my God. You can make this movie here in America. <laughs> Hell <for sure>. yeah. <laughs> and the Lieutenant can't call for backup because this is not a sanctioned raid. He's a dirty cop. And that's when it all was like, what did you get us into, dude? Um, you know, I love that for slow motion shotgun shot because it's dark, they've shut the power out on this floor. And the first cop to fire the shotgun, the light of the muzzle blast reveals their position and everybody floors up, just starts unloading all their machine guns. I think it's really well done. Yeah. Uh, and they're all shot from- dread in the build up to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the movie dread as well. <laughs> took from that <laughs> fun fact there's a frame where you can see carl urban's uh dread grimace just fill the frame <laughs> diabolical <laughs> that was just a sad boy uh and then upstairs andy and mad dog are arguing about killing the cops like oh they're just gonna send and andy's worried about his brother but he's under the guise of being a smart criminal saying this is just gonna send too much heat on us uh and mad dog's like i'll just kill people ah, that's run, run, run. all i want bark bark bark, bark. bark. But then Tom was like, nobody's coming. Don't worry about it. This is under control. Yeah, we'll be fine. And I Andy's do, like, fuck. I did. I kind of wish they leaned into this more because they they kind of talk about it, I think, a little bit later on. But the uh, Tama and he's talking to Mad Dog and all of them. And he's more concerned, like, all right, how much property damage did they do? Yeah. every How, many, how many tenants have we lost? We lost two rooms. Uh, I do kind of like how he's just doing that calculus. He's just a businessman. How, how in the hole are we about this? Like, <laughs> I, I wish they could have like leaned further into that because I did like that aspect. He, of, he's just over there on QuickBooks like, fuck. Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crime lord who isn't really worried that he's losing people per se but he's just like the, the the closer the the heroes get to them the more he's like ah fuck ah this is, i'm gonna have to get a lot of contractors in here to fix up these holes in the wall is this a write-off gosh can i call the maintenance department are they <laughs> off today 
Uh, but the cops that survive end up barricading themselves in a room. Uh, and there's just fucking carnage. This is where we get like the legitimate hand to hand, you know, but the, like there's dozens of people come running in them and they, they do shoot their M16s and stuff at this point. Uh, and it all culminates in the refrigerator bomb move that Rama has uh, where he points it at the door and has them shoot it. It's like a, an old uh, carrot, not kerosene, but like, a, you know, the kind of tank that you'd put on a grill. Yeah, yeah. If it was red in a video game, you would know to shoot it. For sure. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> it was a pretty um, cool trick. And this is where Tama finds out he's lost 30 tenants in two rooms. Uh, he says, go take all their stashes to kind of compensate for the revenue loss. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying, I love how at one point the the fight becomes between two floors because there's that hole in the ground. And, well, they start trying to escape. And, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's really cool and fun. They, well, do they some, like, tackle the dude as he falls through and throws <laughs> him out the window. Yeah, that's, that's A bunch cool. of cool kills, man. Uh Thomas sends Andy and Mad Dog down, says, clean that shit up. And then this is where the dudes with machetes show up. Because, again, bullets are kind of scarce, and they set that up early. I, I, again, I think it's brilliant. When Tama runs out of bullets, killing the five prisoners, it's A, it's like, oh, that's really savage and cool. Like, you sit, find out everything you need to know about Tama's morality. But also, the world that we're in is... There's a lot of poverty. Bullets are scarce. He's mm -hmm. got a drawer full of bullets that he wants to save, so he's going to use the hammer. And so it makes it kind of believable that the cops run out of bullets and then they're just fighting with machetes and shit, yeah. which is way more interesting than a shootout movie. Oh, for sure. Uh, and it, it, but it's so believable, you know, and even mad dogs like speech at the end about like, I don't like pulling and the trigger. He, it's the like fact, ordering takeout. Yeah. And the fact that he doesn't like to use guns works with his character yeah. uh, and makes it believable for the end for the climax. Cause it's like, why would he just let him untie his brother and fight him one v two? That's dumb. Because that's the kind of guy he is. He's a danger he's slut. He's arrogant. He's like, all right, let's do this. He's a total danger slut. He is. Um, but yeah, so there's fucking carnage, uh, and then the dudes with machetes start cleaning up. Rama and Jaka wake up first, and then they quietly wake up the others, and then they accidentally split up. So he follows. I think his name is Bowo, uh, the one that's injured and shot in the ear upstairs. That's where Rama goes, and then the lieutenant. Uh, I forget his fucking name, the guy that lives to the end and Jaka end up going down a hallway and then Mad Dog won't let Andy go alone. It, there's this little scene where he's like, oh, I'm, I got it. I'm by myself because he just wants to save his brother. He's like, no, take two guys with you, weirdo. Uh, he's like, fuck, I'm gonna have to kill him. I'm gonna have to kill him in the elevator. I, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then Rama fucking wrecks house while protecting the injured cop. The choreography is amazing. Yeah. Um, it culminates in this guy that ends up having one bullet and a revolver uh, running out at him. He takes it and shoots him in the head and then sees that that was the only bullet in there. And again, the bullets are scarce. Yeah. I love that, that shot of him. Cause he, yeah, he kills the dude with a gun and then just immediately like, Oh good. I got a gun. I can yeah. like hold my ground. And as he likes, he's standing there in the hallway, he kind of like notices, Oh shit, there's no bullets in this. Son yeah. of a bitch. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> and that gunshot is what gets the guys away from Jaka and company who are waiting behind the corner with a knife. And I just think that was cool. Yeah. Uh, interesting way to shoot that. Uh, they end up, Rama and the injured cop. I think his name is Bobo again. Dude, it, that's that scene when Bobo's like crawling and he like stabs a guy yeah, yeah, while he's crawling. Like, oh, that's when you asked me, like, do you think there's like not that much blood in this, right? I was thinking of that scene specifically where I'm like, I mean, <laughs> well, I feel like I, I, I said that because I feel like a, like actual movies around blood, then, there would have been not much. There would have been like so many like blood spurts, like fucking everywhere, squibbing people. There's up, a like, crazy. few digital spurts in this movie, yeah, that aren't that good. And I think that's why there's not a ton. Well, yeah, they, I mean, I was reading, they, I mean, it's a, they don't have a big budget. Under so, a mill. So even like all the guns they're using are airsoft guns that they're putting digital muzzle flashes and digital gun casings flying out of it. So yeah. Yeah. Tough shit, man. I think it overall, it works. I think yeah, there's the very little where really I can well. like tell. Yeah. Um, there's a, and there's a couple gnarly kills where I'm like, nice. Actually, one thing that production wise that was bothering me about this movie, and I didn't know if it was the way I was watching it or if you picked up on this at all was, is the audio mixing like really all over the place on this movie? It where, is. So where like, it's it really hard to hear any dialogue, even when there's nothing going on. It depends on how you watched it. Uh, the Netflix version, I had to turn off cause it was so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some lines that are usually subtitled that weren't. And like, 
it'll auto not uh, Netflix auto selects the dubbed version of anything. So that's annoying. You have to go in and change that. Did you yeah. watch it on Netflix? No, I did not. Oh, great. I watched the, the, the subtitle version. Um, I'm not a monster. No, no, for sure. It's a, the dub is horrible. <laughs> Hello. I will miss you wife. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so bad. Like I will miss you, wife. <laughs> I may not be a smart man, but I know who my wife is. I will not see you for the rest of the movie. Andy, I miss you. <laughs> you should come home. Robin Wright is Andy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, did you? Uh, I, I watched the the Blu-ray that I have, but anyway, they they, I, they, I, they redid the sound mixing completely. There's a whole new score done by Lincoln Park. What? I swear to God, like the whole thing's different. I like, did not some catch different versions. that version at all. So I can imagine that it's possible that that was just kind of janky. I think I, I think I rented this. It's not like crawling in my, it's just what like a, I've done. it's the same kind of thing as where like Trent Reznor does the score, but it's not nine inch nails. You uh, know? Okay. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some different audio versions of this, but uh, they end up g getting to the, the medicine guy from earlier's room. Um, and he is guilted into hiding them because he thinks they're they're good good cops. Uh, the machete guys come in to check the room. I fucking it's love the machete through the wall scene. It's cool. It's yeah. brutal because it's, it's like, like stuck in his skin, and then he ends up having to pinch the blood off so that he doesn't realize that he stabbed a person. Yeah. Oh, it's gnarly, dude. Because they're hidden in like a like a crawl space or something. Yeah. That's behind some fake wall. And so dude, dudes don't know it. He's like, Oh, this could be a crawl space. It's yeah. like stabbing it. And yeah, that shot of the blade just like kind of in his cheek. And you can see his eye like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. And then the, uh, the medicine guy kind of saves him by pretending to raise hell, but he's also legitimately probably annoyed. Like you're tearing up my whole fucking dude, place, dude. Nobody's tearing, in. You're tearing up my house. My sick wife is here. Nobody's in here. Uh, and then, yeah. So they run out, they get away with that. But then we cut to Andy in the elevator. That's when he kills his two buddies. And the guy's like, looks over and goes, why? <laughs> he just sees the knife out. It's not time for knife out. Why, why do you have the ow? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> um, Dude, the, the, when he has the knife through the guy's neck, but the knife is like scraping on the wall of the, the metal elevator. Ooh. Ugh. Stabby Yikes. stabs. Uh, and then the the medicine dude tells Rama, he's like, tell me all you know about this building. And he basically is like, well, you're fucked, dude. That's what I know. And he's like, oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> the only way out is the way you came in. And so that's not looking good. Um, and uh, he says, oh, by the way, your boss, Lieutenant, I've seen him before. He's in here all the time. So that's not a good that sign. That old fuck. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, I laugh really loud on the subtitle when... Uh, Thomas talking about him in the beginning, like, ah, oh, that old fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old fuck. Which is so funny because that dude does stick out in that whole group of people. Like, everyone's got their SWAT gear. Then here's this dude with his, like, golfing polo with a, with a vest, on. vest on. <laughs> He's there not to do the dirty work, for sure. Uh, he ends up leaving uh, the injured cop, Boa, with the poor man. And then, because, again, that sucks for him. Like, cool, if they come back, I just got this fucking sewn up cop sitting in here was that guy and you bleeding? might never come back. So that's awkward for me. Was that guy bleeding green at one point? There's a shot where like he pulls something out. out of him and like green comes out. And it's, I was wondering like, is that already infected or something? I don't know. That's weird though. Ugh. Wasn't looking good, but Rama ends up running into some fuckers right outside. Uh, and it's, I think it's so cool. Like when he throws the guy off the balcony, you think, what are you going to do here? He's going to fall all the way. He's going to fall the 11 flights. It'll be dope. Nope. He hits the balcony on the floor right below and just breaks his spine. Yeah. It's such a cool, like, uh, subversion of expectations. Mm. And, and then it's 1v4. And one of my favorite kills in the whole movie is there's a broken door frame. Oh, yeah. And he grabs the guy and jumps backward and then lands his throat onto, the, like, the spiky wood part. Yeah. So unexpected. So cool. Uh, big fan. Yeah, because when he first uh, did that action of jumping backwards, I was like, that's a weird... Ow, what? Yeah. And, oh, no. And I think I had just never seen a movie like this back, at, you know, when this around when this came out in the sense that, like, these action sequences go on for so long, like, until mm -hmm. these fighters are exhausted. And, you know, you're talking these scenes that go on for four, five, six minutes, like the fight in this room with the three main machete guys. Like, you would think he would dispatch them fairly quickly, but they just knocking them down and they keep getting back up and it's like it's real scratching and clawing situation just just and just trying to get any sort of advantage on these guys it's yeah. wild and then it culminates in him using the guy as a cushion to jump out the window oh yeah 
which is a crazy scene. I don't even know how they shot this on their budget. And he ends up landing on like a um, fire escape, fire room. escape, and then stumbling through another window, all dizzy with some junkies. <laughs> I love the junkie. Like, where'd he come from? Hey. Um, and then at this moment, he thinks of his pregnant wife. And I don't always think flashback things work like this. Like, remember why emotionally this matters. But I think in this instance, it's like his will to keep going. Because you would think, how is he keep you know, continuing to, to fight. Hello, pregnant wife. Yes, I need to make it home. <sighs> oh, pregnant lady will not fall down. Mm -mm, not on my watch. Uh, the lieutenant tells Jaka, the cripple and the rookie are gone. <laughs> we can't worry about them. We need to leave and save our own asses. And Jaka's like, suck balls, dirty cop. I know that you got us into this shit and I'm not leaving my men here. Uh, and they walk right out into Mad Dog. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the worst possible moment to walk out. And he pulls a gun on him. And then the other guys run off. I wrote, he brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> and, and I guess that the guy who, he did literally, I guess that the guy who was sent to protect the lieutenant at Jocko's behest killed the other two. He's a pretty badass fighter too. Yeah. Because uh, he's safe with the lieutenant later. Uh, but then, yeah, he, the Mad Dog kills Jocko barehanded because he doesn't like guns. It's like order and take out. He'd rather cook. Yeah, he, he just wants to have this fight and... It's a, it's a really good, it's a really good fight. And I was really sad when Jaka died. Oh yeah. Me too. Oh man, my love dude. Jocka. He snaps his fucking neck. Eh. Brutal. Uh, but I love how that, that's established as like mad dogs, like fatality, his finishing move. Cause he tries to do that later on in the fight with Andy and Rama. He yeah. Sets him, one of them up. I forget which one, but he sets one of them up to break their neck, but he stopped beforehand. It's his fatality. Yeah. yeah. Like he, like literally he breaks Jocka's neck. You can hear him go, oh yeah. Because he just <laughs> loves, yeah. he's such a dangerous blood. He, lo he loves that rush. <sighs> uh, Rama and Andy have a chat. Because like the last time we saw Rama, he got like yanked into a room and it looked like, uh-oh. Uh, but it turns out that's that's his brother. They haven't spoken in six years. He tells him he's going to be an uncle. Like, hey man, why are you a criminal? I, said, I was just, I'm just a criminal. You a cop. All right. But I love you. You look good in your uniform. I look good in mine. Look at this Henley. It's fucking look fire. This crime Henley. <laughs> it's fire. It's not a crime hoodie. It's a crime Henley. That's right. <laughs> uh, yep. And then he runs into Mad Dog, who's like dragging the dead Jocka. It's a hilarious scene. <laughs> Jocka, Mad Dog is also one of my favorite characters because he's, he's like, like, "What are you doing, man? Take like, us to the boss." That's not the guy we're looking for. I don't care. I, don't know. I got. I got somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe I can trick him. Who'd you got? <laughs> Nobody. And then Rama's like watching the whole time and sees that Jock is dead. And then Rama runs into the lieutenant and the fuck boy <laughs> and tells them Bowo is safe, uh, that Jock is dead and they need to get to the 15th floor. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to complete the mission. We're going to get Tama, his bitch ass. And that's how we're going to get out. Yeah, cause I, I assume they're going to like use him as a meat shield. Like, all right, let us out. Or just he can order everybody to, you know, it's like put a gun to his head. He'll do whatever. And then lieutenant's like, we don't have a gun. It's like, whatever, man, we'll find a fork. I don't know. Uh, it's there's, just pretty there's probably a machete under a table somewhere. <laughs> they're they're lousy with machetes here. Look under every table. Uh, yeah. So the boss is mad. Andy's empty handed. But not only that, he saw him on the camera footage. He knew he was going to come up empty handed. Busted. Yup. And he stabs his hand, him. knows that he let a cop go. And there's three cops remaining. There's really four. Because if you count Boa, who's injured. But whatever. Yeah. Uh, the trio... Make it up to generic bad guy lab where drugs are made and stuff. There's yeah. always one of these where there's just powder everywhere and chemical sets. What drugs are they making? We don't, don't know. know. Drugs. Meth or when? Metherin. Uh, Metherin and uh, tenol. Metheprosin and tenol. <laughs> uh, and they, I love this lab fight too. It's fucking gnarly. Because you even see like old man Wayu is like just boxing. Like, <laughs> ugh, ugh. Hit Part you with a chair. Yeah. Half at you, sir. He puts it a good, <laughs> he, he does some good stuff. But this specifically was the action scene where I was like, I'm good. Like <laughs> we can speed this along. Oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. This was, but this fight seat in the lab was the one that I was the least engaged with. Like really? all the, all the other ones I was kind of pretty in on, but this is the one towards the end of the movie. Where I'm like, okay, I, I don't need, this is just bros being friends, this. beating ass. I love it. Beating <laughs> <ass>. <laughs> That's how we bond. That's true. Yeah. When we hang Different out, kind, but like, it was like, dude, it's Friday night. You know, time, to beat, time to beat ass. <laughs> how you want to die. <laughs> Face, face down or ass up either way <laughs> or is it the same thing uh and then he walks by and then why you and the uh, fuck boy go upstairs <laughs> but he sees this poor guy he sees andy being tortured um his brother mad dog lets him get him and he's like i want to fight you both at the same time 
What a uh, dangerous lot. That's right. You ever fight two guys at the same time? <laughs> Oof, never felt more alive. Oh, I love it. Want to be my third? <laughs> You'd be my unicorn for this Tweak fight. Tweak my nipples while we fight. <laughs> he wants to fight. Uh, Lieutenant and Dagu is the guy's name that I keep calling fuckboy, but they're upstairs. Dagu. Uh, they kill three guards. They end up cornering Tama. And then Lieutenant Plot Twist kills Dagu. Yeah, because Dagu's kind of like, you you dummy. The, the lieutenant knows he's going to jail, even if he makes it out safe. So he's got to think of a way to get out, which is unlikely, but also be the only one. Mm -hmm. That way he can tell his own version of what happened. Uh-oh. Uh, so he kills Dagu. And then uh, the three awesome dudes are still in there fighting. Rama and Mad Dog and Andy are in there skitting it. It's a long fight that really Mad Dog almost beats the shit out of both of them, which is kind of crazy. Ends up Rama getting choked out after a fierce battle. And then they stab him with like a... Um, it's like a L L LED, or not a LED, but a PVC. No, no not PVC. What uh, kind of light is that light. called? It's a bulb, yeah. It's the really, sh the fun that, the ones that are fun to shatter. You ever like been outside of the dumpster just yeah. breaking a bunch of them? Yeah. That's, it's awesome. Don't they, don't they do that? Halogen? Uh, Halogen? Ooh. Uh, I'm, I just, I looked up like lights fun to break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to type brittle light bulbs. Uh, they have like, they usually have powder in them. Yeah, they do. Light tubes with powder right bulb tubes somebody's screaming i know they're 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 the people i can hear it right now what do there's fluorescent light tubes that's no, just all they're called no there's a name that i'm looking for that i've known my entire life anyway you guys know what we're talking about those bulbs it's like a piece of that that he shoves in his neck and then he still stands up and starts fucking fighting him for a while yeah and then yeah there's that brutal shot where he like takes the when they finally get him down yeah. and they like fully like stretches cut him it with across it. his throat yeah yeah brutal I don't know what I was thinking earlier in the episode. I'm like, is this that violent? <laughs> and for some reason, Tama tech talks hella shit to why you, you know, he's like, you're not going to get out. I'm not going to, and I'm not going to do shit for you. He's like, you've been dead since I got the call from Reza. And that's mm -hmm. that, that's at the point where he's like, well, fuck it. I am fucked. You know, like the, even if you get out of here, like they want you dead, they're not going to stop. So he shoots Tama and then goes to shoot himself, but his gun's empty. Um, uh, Bummer. And so they end up walking him out in cuffs and um, Andy gives them evidence of every dirty cop that's ever been there. But he's like, find a guy named Bunawar. He's a good dude. Uh, and they get Bowo. They move to head out. And Andy's basically like, this is what I do. I do gangster shit. You're all right. As mm -hmm. long as you're with me, just keep walking. I do love that line. He says like in here, I can protect you. Can you say the same thing mm -hmm. about me in your world? Which is kind of like, wow. Baller. Yeah. Man. definitely can't that can't <laughs> like, i'll be honest you're gonna go to jail <laughs> <laughs> long time yeah um, yeah the powers that be will fuck you that's true mm -hmm. if you like this movie at all i highly recommend the raid 2 uh some i don't want to spoil anything but i just do want to jazz you up so stop listening if you don't want any spoilers at all for the raid 2 but there's some really cool characters that you might assume are dead that are very short and frisky, oh. that are definitely a huge part of the second one. With a pregnant wife? That's right, baby. <laughs> she come back with the <laughs> baby and they, she also fights? Mm-hmm. You, you sold me. It's like the, 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 baby. the baby fighting in uh, Kung Pao. <laughs> it's a big part of the raid too, is stuff like that. <laughs> as soon as it's born, it comes out swinging its umbilical cord like, hey, yeah. Yeah, chokes and <laughs> one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love the raid changed the world of action cinema forever. Can't wait to see Gareth Evans newest film havoc. Whenever the fuck that comes out, supposedly it's finally going to be this year. Uh, thank you so much, Orion for choosing this masterpiece. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad I finally got to see this one. Big, big fan of this movie. I love you all so much. That's all the time we've got for right now. We've got to go return some videotapes. My name is Keith. And I'm Steve. And this was streaming things. Happy streaming. Happy streaming.